If you are watching this channel for the first time, please we we'll advise you click on the share button, click on the red subscribe button, and on the notification button, so that when we have a new episode coming out, directly it will be shared to you. You will have the link and be notified of this edition because they keep on coming and it will interest you, it will move you. I welcome you viewers and listeners, ladies and gentlemen, to this special edition on the Daily Positive Living Principle channel with Dr. Daniel Otto. I call this a special edition on this channel because of two reasons. Number one, it contains a special topic, a crucial topic. That is the reason why we are not making progress in our individual life. Why we are not making progress in our collective lives, in our family lives, in our lives as a country, in African countries. This topic is the major criteria why countries are classified into developed, developing countries and underdeveloped countries. It is the reason why some people are explaining their condition, their situation, thinking that is one enemy that is fighting them somewhere, not knowing that this is a major issue. This issue is fundamental to everyone. The reason why there are calamities in the society, even ministries are explaining their condition, general overseers, private organizations, general managers, executives, Private and public institutions are not making headway just because of this topic. And we need to talk about it. Secondly, why is this edition very special? It's going to take a little time. You must take some time to watch it from the beginning to the end and let it go viral because it's a must-watch video for all because it's going to do us good. And what is this topic? It is structure. And I came in this edition to ask you a question specifically. That you can answer structure and expertise which one is more important if you were to choose between the two structure and expertise which one will you choose this is very key and at the end of this discussion brothers and sisters you will understand with me and you will know where our problem is you will be able to diagnose because it is good for us to diagnose where our problem is Every of this problem is attributed to this that we are going to discuss, this topic that we are going to discuss, structure and expertise. So in this edition, we'll be looking at what structure is. We'll also be looking at the components of structure. Then we'll go further to talk about expertise. And then we'll now begin to differentiate between structure and expertise. And then the superiority, the relevance and significance of structure above expertise. Then we'll be talking about the consequences of lack of structure. And then we'll now talk about the enemies of structure. Then we can find a way forward able to round up this session. This is going to be very, very interesting because a lot of us, especially in this country, is loaded with a lot of professionals, expertise, technocrats, knowledgeable people, intellectuals, yet our condition is still the same. What is actually the issue? These are the things we need to talk about. If not, we are not moving anywhere. It's the reason why we cannot make a legacy. We cannot add value to our system. We have remained at the same place and people are crying daily because of the absence of this topic, lack of structure. But let me remind you, recall, before we begin to talk about structure, recall in my first episode, the first episode when we started this channel, on the three most basic things that you need in life, three major things you need in life to succeed. You don't need more than three. And we talked about it. I like to remind you because it's the foundation of structure. What did we talk about? We talked about information. We talked about vision and decision. These are Three basic, most important, crucial things that you need in life to succeed on earth. If you have these three major things, I'm telling you, it will be difficult for you to fail. If you have a vision where you are going, your preferred future, because every man is born for a reason. You are not an accidental creation. You came into this world for a reason. And that reason must be met. If not, you are a waste of generation. Because it is better for you not to be born than to be born and not know why you were born. It is better not to be alive than to be alive and not know why you are alive. 
So if you can have a vision and you can have relevant information about your vision and you can take a decision, a step to move further, I'm telling you, you cannot remain the same. So these three key issues are very key and they are fundamental to putting a structure. That is why I want to remind you, what did we say about information? We say that information is the acquisition of facts and figures. So if you gather information enough, it will translate into knowledge. Knowledge then becomes acquisition of information. So if you gather knowledge enough, it should be able to go on to become wisdom because wisdom is application of knowledge. But when knowledge is acquired and it is not applied, it's a serious matter. It is like a bondage. It is like a person inside water and soap is still entering his eyes. That is, it is like a bank accounting money, yet suffering from malaria. That is lack of money. That is pocketitis. He's counting the money, but he's as poor as anything. Nothing enters his pocket. Do you know the disease called diabetes mellitus that COVID-19 COVID and coronavirus is pushing everywhere? Is starvation in the midst of plenty it is a situation that we need to deal with. These are fundamentals as we are going into structure. The worst sickness on earth is ignorance. Ignorance is worse than cancer. It is worse than leukemia. It's worse than poverty. And so we must talk about it because it gives rise to structure. Let me give you, give you a story quickly. A man bought a tear leather Camry vehicle and brought it home. Automatic tear leather Camry. It was delivered to him. And after this car was delivered to him, the man called Adjani. After they left, the man began to complain. Anytime it is night, from 6 p.m., the car will no longer move. During the day, the car will move, but when it comes to evening period, the car will no longer move. And it became a cause, a cause of concern. He sent a message to the manufacturer, new vehicle, tear leader. And he has a guarantee. The company became worried. The manager of the company was also worried and called back to Ajani, please check very well. I think that car has no fault. Ajani kept on complaining. And he was living far away in hundreds of kilometers far away from where he bought the vehicle. The complaint became too much that the company had to organize their engineer to go and visit Ajani where he was. They sent an engineer right from the company to go and visit Ajani. When they met Ajani, they said, please, this vehicle will not have any problem. He said there is a problem. So they decided to observe and see what will happen. They drove the car during the day. When it was night, they entered the car with Ajani. What is the problem? When they entered the car, guess what happened? In automatic vehicle, there is a pack P, there is a N, ultra, and there is a drive, and all the ones. When it was 6 p.m., guess what Ajani did? Ajani decided to remove the gear from pack to N because he thinks it is night. So when he puts it on N, which is neutral, the car will no longer move. He will switch it from D, which is drive, to N which is neutral. Ajani thought that M means night. Ignoramus stupidities is a serious disaster. It caused the whole company a whole day to send engineer, fly engineer from that place down to where Ajani is. And that has been the foundation for lack of structure. It's a monster. And we are going to talk about it. So what then is structure? We are going to talk about them one by one. I'm going to give you a barrage of of definition because this problem is a monster. I will give you all the definitions that are involved in structure. And I like you to follow me gently because it's going to be very key. I'm going somewhere. If we can deal with structural issues, systemic issues in this country, in our lives, individuals, in our organizations, in our churches, in our ministries, I am telling you this place will be a healthy atmosphere for all to enjoy and will leave a legacy for generations to come. What then is structure? I'd like to give you these definitions. These definitions are standard definitions that are born out of study, diligent study and research from learning, not just reading. What then is, let me give you the, the definitions. Number one, structure is simply the way that things or something is built, organized and arranged. It's a system of arrangement, it's a system of organization, and it's a system of building structure. What then is structure? It's a system of function in a pattern, the way things function in a patterned fashion. That is, 
a system of arrangement, a system of organization that functions in a pattern fashion. So pattern must be there. It is an organized system of interrelated elements in an orderly manner. Remember, orderliness is very, very key. That is structure. What then is structure? Is an act of construction or a building that is arranged in a pattern of organization. So the organization, there is a pattern of organization. It is a planned organogram showing hierarchical relationship between the various elements with a well-defined line of command. Planned organogram. Another definition. It is a consistent hierarchical use of coordination, organization, arrangement, construction, management, enforcement, and functionality of infrastructure and resources. All these are very, very important. Consistent hierarchical use in a coordinated manner and in an organization with management and enforcement. It is the establishment of principles, it is the establishment of standards, regulations, rules, laws, and ethics to ensure effectiveness and efficiency. So then is structure. It involves proactive mentality in thinking ahead that culminates in putting down system operations that emanates in touching the lives of generations yet unborn positively. That is structure. It is a laying down of strong, solid, and long-lasting foundation of system that is resilient and dogged to withstand the test of time and stress. It is the consideration and the selfless thinking beyond oneself and traveling into the future with imagination of putting down systems for ages to come. Structure. It's not just immediate, it's long-lasting. What then is structure? It is a preferential consideration and action that enthrones legacy above vacancy. It is the equitable implementation of fairness and justice irrespective of race, irrespective of status, irrespective of position, irrespective of influence, structure. It is a constitutional, it is the executive, it is the judicial and the legislative mentality and action of putting down laws, regulation, uh, due process, standards, policies, ethics that defies greed, selfishness, religion and tribalism. <laughs> These are key definitions. It is essentially the erection of systems for impact above personal self-gain and income, personal self-interest, erection of impact above personal self-gain and income. In summary, structure is an embodiment of systems. It's an embodiment of interrelated elements with an organizational chart defining the construction, the building, the pattern, the culture, the arrangement, the coordination, the organization, and the style showing clearly the line of authority and responsibility of each individual and entities in the institution. This is what we are talking about. So note that the different jobs and positions are inter interrelated by structures, specifying the channel, line of command, mode of communication among the different arms of members, which allows for perfect planning, functioning, and performance. These are all the things we are talking about structure. These things must be understood. So from this definition, there are key issues and key points you need to note down. So key points in this definition that we need to take note. Number one is building. When we're talking about structure, is building and construction. That's number one. We're talking about interrelated elements, which are very key. We're also talking about planned organogram and 
organizational chart, organogram organizational chart. So each in the each organization must have a chart that flows in the line of command. Then we're also talking about embodiment of systems in a structure. Take note of definite line line of command that is line of authority. <laughs> That's another thing to talk about. Roles and responsibilities in structure. Coordination and organization. Arrangement. Take note of the hierarchical relationship, which is key. What of communication and the relationship. Functionality and performance. And then regularity and enforcement. These are key points you need to take note in this definition of structure. As you understand these definitions, it because it makes my job very easy so we can understand what we're going to talk about. The next thing we're going to talk about are now the components of structure. Now we are going to talk about the components of structure. When we're talking about components of structure, we, are talk we, are, we mean that we're talking about both the container and the content. We are also talking about like quantity and quality. We are talking about the dressing and then the character. We are talking about the packaging and its content. This is what we mean. The building itself and the content of the building. So it is all that is involved in structure. If you forget anything or everything as we are talking about this structure, please, i like you to note that don't forget the components of structure because this is very key. Anytime we are talking about structure, the components of structure are majorly four and this should be remembered. Number one component that we should remember is infrastructure. Very, very key. So anytime you are talking about structure, infrastructure is number one. What is number four? There are four majorly. Infrastructure, number one. Number two is management. <laughs> number three is functionality. <laughs> we are going to be talking about it one by one. Then number four is enforcement. These are the basic components of structure. So anytime we are talking about systems, we are talking about structures, these are the major things that it contains. These are the major components. Number one, we are going to take them one by one for emphasis, for clarification. What is infrastructure? Infrastructure talks about the building itself. It is the construction or the architectural design, the building that houses where the institution is or where the services are being rendered from. That is infrastructure. It talks about the foundation of the building. It talks about the floor of the building. It talks about the building itself, the ceiling, the roofing. It talks about the surrounding of the building. Even the access that leads to the building is also part of infrastructure. What makes up the whole building? The amenities that makes up the building are also part of it. What about the finesse, the, 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 the decorum, the decoration of the, the, the infrastructure is very, very key of the building. What of the access to the building? What of the security situation? So when you are talking about infrastructure, the environment of that area is also very, very key. The surrounding, the fence, how is the fence? The hygienic environment, the finesse, very, very important. What of the gate and the security arrangement? They are part of the infrastructure. The maintenance of the building is very, very key. In our culture, especially in Africa and Nigeria, we don't have a maintenance culture. The maintenance culture that prevents dilapidation is very, very key. There's what we call plant preventive maintenance, which is very key. You don't wait until when your structure starts dilapidating or start breaking down before you do maintenance. Maintenance is supposed to be planned monthly, uh, uh, by monthly, or, or six monthly, or annually. That is how it is planned. 
It is only in Nigeria and Africa that 1,000 Naira or 2,000 Naira will spoil a whole equipment or a vehicle. And that vehicle will remain there. Somebody will pack it because there was no 2,000. And next two, three years, the whole vehicle is gone. And they are talking of that vehicle is condemned. And they will now arrange for how they will sell it off for others to buy. <laughs> this only happens in this setting when there is no structure. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the maintenance of those, the building, you know, the, the environment, the waste management is also very, very key. So this is what you call infrastructure. Why is infrastructure very important? Why is the building very important? Because before you assess a service, before you assess a product, you must have to also see the environment. You, you, you have to also assess. Before you assess the service, you must go through the building itself. You can imagine when you enter a place to assess a service, you enter a building and the whole place is leaking. The roof is leaking. And the whole place is, is dilapidated. You will not be comfortable assessing the service. You will not be satisfied. Supposing you go to a restaurant and you want to buy food, <laughs> and the woman that is selling food is discharging from his nose. Kata is discharging everywhere. Or oh, the, the children want to buy kose or akara. And the woman's children are defecating feces and pooping around all the place. How will you assess that service? How will you buy the akara? You, if I ask you, you see a baby pooping around the restaurant. Will you go and eat that food? No. So the environment, the structure are very important before you can assess a service. That is why we are talking about the importance of infrastructure. So number one component of structure is infrastructure. The building has to be key. The building has to be maintained. Those things are very, very key. The number two component of structure that we talk about is management. Management. Very, very key when you are talking about structure. Recall in my previous episode, I think the eighth or the ninth episode, where we talk about the 13 M's of information. The 13 M's of information that makes you outstanding, that make you succeed in your life and destiny. I think you can re review that episode if you have subscribed or you go back to it and rewind. But let me refresh your mind. Those 13 M's are very key. Number one of those M's we talk about was the knowledge of your maker. The knowledge of your creator. The one that fabricated you into this world. He brought you in for a purpose. So the knowledge of that connection is very key. Because every product has a manual. So your creator is the one that wrote all the manual about you. So the knowledge of your maker is very key. Number two, we talked about the knowledge of your mandate. Everybody is provided with a mandate, with an assignment. You are not an accidental creation. So you came into this world for an assignment. That mandate is given to you for you to fulfill, which is very key. What of the knowledge of your message? You are a messenger sent by God. So you have a message. What message are you giving? That's number three, knowledge of M, the three M, number three. Number four, we talk about the knowledge of your man to what tool were you giving out to operate? So every, every professional have a tool. Everybody that is sent have a tool for operation. So your man to is key. What are you using to achieve your purpose on earth? Then another M, your mission. Uh, what are you on earth to achieve particularly? You are on earth to fulfill an assignment. And at the end of the day, you pack your load and go back home. That mission, how are you able to fulfill? Are you achieving that mission? That knowledge of mission is very, very key. Then the knowledge of your mentor, your role model, the mentor and the mentee, the supervisor and the supervisee, the teacher and the teacher. You need somebody to fold as a role model, that, that, that a, a father that you look up to, that you mentors you. A father that provides you further so you can further for your future is very, very key. We need a mentor. <laughs> Mentorship is teaching you so that you can achieve. Then the knowledge of your marketing. What marketing strategies are you using? 
what are your are your procedures of marketing yourself of selling your product this is very very key what product are you offering how are you selling it what are the strategies that is the knowledge of your marketing mentality your mental makeup your thinking ability your thinking faculty you are what you think about if you think you cannot achieve it you cannot you cannot make it so what you think as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so your knowledge of your mentality is very very key then your motivation which is key what drives you what is your motive what drives you is more important than what you drive many people don't know many people waste money on the things they drive but what is driving you to achieve your purpose on earth is more important than what you drive this is very very key then the knowledge of your marriage which you talked about very very key the knowledge of your masses <laughs> what what target audience are you operating with which is very very key these are the knowledge the ends we talked about marriage we have talked about extensively your connection your, your connection your connectivity your contact which is the generation of all the connection marriage and the last one was management so management is very very key in fact the platform for where all these ends operate is management so these things are very very important and the resources in management are four if you are talking of management management of these resources what are those resources we also call them the four m's and this is very very key what are those four m's number one of those m is minute minute we are talking of time management <laughs> life is measured by time just like you measure weight in kilogram, height in centimeter, you measure life by time. If you are wasting time, you are wasting life. If you are not time conscious, you are not life conscious. You are wasting life. So that's what we are talking about. So management involves time management, punctuality, which is very, very key. Another M is material, equipment. These are very key. Maintenance culture tools, data, and all the things, access that you have are materials and they need management. Those are things that make things up. What is the other management? The other M is money. The third M is money, financial management. <laughs> we cannot overemphasize the importance of money. Almost over 90 something percent of our prayer point is money, financial, tied to finance. If you don't manage things very well, Many people are, are poor because of financial, lack of financial management, lack of financial orderliness. Their expenditure is more than their income, so they are working hard. They, are, they, they make a lot of money, but their expenditure is small. Financial management is key. The last M is manpower, human resources management. This is where many people miss it. They don't know how to manage people, to handle people, and so people leave them like that. They have they don't they don't have the knowledge or how to, to, to manage personnel. Personnel management is key for you to achieve well in structure. The knowledge of your management is key. And this is where I tell anybody at the level of leadership position to go and study management. If be it a president, be it a senator, be it a, a, a house member, a governor, a director general executive position you must know management if not you cannot lead well it's very very key even the, the general overseers of churches bishops senior pastors it is better for you to learn management than even to go for school of theology and very very important because many of them does not know how to manage people and people leave them alone so ministry is even the management of People, unction, and resources. So if you don't know management and you are leading people in any function, oh my God, people will leave you alone. You scatter the whole place. You'll be thinking one demon is affecting you. It's one demon that is your problem, not knowing that it's the knowledge of your management. So go to school and learn management. Business management, personnel management, administration. Learn it to help you to build your structure so that you can maintain people and close doors for people that are leaving you. This is very, very key. In every leadership position on earth, management is key.
So as we are talking about this, how what are the functions of management? Let's make let's, let's point them out so that we can we really know what we are talking about. There are functions of management, about 10 or 11 of them, which are very, very key. These are things you must know if you must build structure. When you are talking of structure, all these things are, are involved. Number one function of management is planning. Um, uh, planning is a detailed, timely arrangement way of how activities are being carried out. You are thinking ahead, deciding ahead of, you are, you, are, you are planning ahead of things that you want to do. These things are very important. So you are planning ahead. And it's often said that if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So planning is key. Anybody in the, in the position of leadership must know how to plan. And a, a, a plan is not a plan until it is written down with responsibilities, with activities, responsible people, with action tracker. These are very, very key. So you cannot forget planning. Planning is key to everything in life. Planning. We're going to come back on it because this, this on it heavily because you need planning to achieve everything on earth. So what are the functions of management? Organizing. <laughs> you need to know how to organize things. What are other functions of management? Coordinating, which is very key. Then the other aspects are staffing. Your, the knowledge of how your, or of your staff, they are very, very important. Many of us don't even know we recruit. And so the knowledge of your recruitment. Recruitment decides the, the kind of staff that you have. So your knowledge of recruitment, your criteria of accepting people into your organization is very, very key. Recruitment strategies and criteria are very, very key. There are people that will meet your criteria. So your recruitment standard and strategies will give you the kind of staffing that you need. Then your leading, your leading, your leadership role, your ability to influence people is what we call leadership. People should go for courses in leadership. This is very key. And they lead, your leadership style is important. The style you use in leading people can drive people away. So we're going to talk about them in full. What are other functions of management? Directing. How do you direct? Many people are directing with authority and sending people away. Then we talk about decision making, which is very key. And then controlling. Oh my God. Controlling, controlling how you bring everything under control. It depends on your management ability. These are functions of management. Then your delegation. Oh, many people don't know how to delegate. It's another thing entirely. Once they are not present, everything, nothing is working. Everything will not be working until they are present. And so many people will be doing eye service when it comes around. They don't know. Some people delegate without power. The ability to delegate is the ability for a proper management and a proper functioning of structure. This is very, very key. Then your reporting system are part of the functions of management. How do you report? The way you report things, that reporting system, it gives you your evaluation, how you are moving, how things are moving. So these are very, very key. These are important functions of management that cannot be overlooked. Without this, structure cannot be maintained. So these are very, very key issues. So there are different types of management, strategic management at the level of the top management. You, you have tactical management and operational management at the level, day-to-day -day management. So these are key things that we need to study because they are very, very key. So in talking about structure, management is key and we are coming back on it because this is very, very heavy. But three aspects of the component of structure is functionality. Functionality. When you are talking about structure or systems, it is not only the infrastructure. You are not just talking about the building. You are talking about the operations and the, the functions of, of, the, of the various components. How do they function? How do they operate? It's very, very important. So you, 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 functionality is, is determined by the delivery of the services. How are the services delivered? Which is very, very key. Who are benefiting from these services? What is the customer satisfaction rate? What is the long waiting time? Who are your target audiences? How are they being benefited? What's the duration of your service? All these are embedded in functionality, which is very, very key. Every infrastructure that is not functioning is a dead infrastructure. So function determines importance. 
and it determines the benefit of what that organization provides. So functionality is key. What is the customer, customer satisfaction index? What is the quality assurance? What, 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 what kind of quality uh, services are you delivering? So what are we talking about? When we talk about functionality, what does it mean? It talks about service delivery. It talks about the duration of the services. Is it 24 hour duration of service or 12 hourly or during the day or night operation? What is it? What is what of the regularity of the services? What of the quality of the services? Quality management is key. Customer satisfaction. What of demand and supply? These are very, very key issues in, in functionality. Demand generation and supply chain is very, very key. Attitude of the providers. These are key issues. What of monitoring systems that are in place? supervision and evaluation and as as a, a, a manager or a somebody that is a structural person must know the difference between monitoring supervision and evaluation monitoring talks about the processes supervision is on the manpower the human resources why evaluation you are evaluating the program how far you have made progress are you following the objective? These are key issues about functionality. Then you are talking about development of action tracker, responsibilities. People need to be given responsibilities and roles. Each action point have responsible people. Customer satisfaction, punctuality, development of dashboard. Like you drive a car and you see the kind of uh, speed you are making. They are very, very key. If you are running too fast, you know how to make up. If you are running too slow, you need to update and upgrade. These are key principles in functionality. Then you are talking about qualitative and quantitative assessment in evaluation. Qualitative as how do you assess your product or your customer satisfaction from interviews key informant interviews or exit interviews or you talk about focus group discussion where you gather some people and then trying to find out how your product is being given out is very very key some questionnaires or even a drop box questionnaire box or plain box where you drop things and people complain you get a feedback these are functional things that we need to then surveys researches evidence based decisions these are key issues to know how you are functioning if you are operating in any area. These are key, key things. Then what of your regular meetings? There is no way a structure or system can function without regular meetings of human resources. Departmental meetings, divisional meetings, workers meetings, leadership meetings. These are very, very key issues. Managerial meetings, top management meetings. These should be scheduled without meetings. Structure cannot function. These are management and structural time-specific meetings with agenda. Every meeting must have agenda. Somebody must take up, will be responsible for each of the things. These are structural issues. And without this, you cannot maintain structure. It is with this that you talk about accessibility. And then you now talk about affordability or acceptability or accountability or approachability or what? Or availability. All these things are part of what makes things to function well. So if you are talking about structure, functionality is key and these things must come out. The number four component of structure in this episode is enforcement. Enforcement. What is enforcement? Enforcement is the act of compelling observance. It is the act of compelling compliance to rule, to the law, or to an obligation. Human beings, especially African and Nigerians, when our blood, our genes are loaded with corruption, with tendencies to break rules and protocols, even God in the Bible says that the, the, the imagination of men are evil continually. For structure to work, there must be an enforcement. So enforcement is a key component when you are talking about structure. If you want a system to work and there is no enforcement, <laughs> you are just uh, deceiving yourself. Enforcement entails. It entails consistency and regularity. It must be consistent. God is a God of consistency. And so for things to work properly, there must be consistency. There must be an accountability where people can be held accountable to anything that goes wrong. People must be held responsible. Then they consist of 
compelling and policing for compliance to rule and law, and law or due process. This is very key. This is where we need to compel and police people. So we also need deep disciplinary measures, sanctions and reward. These are what it entails. The establishment of law enforcement agencies and officers that are not biased or prejudiced. These are very, very key. They are not selective in their judgment, but they apply fairness and justice irrespective of position, irrespective of influence, irrespective of status, irrespective of income. These are very, very key in enforcement. If not, structure or systems cannot be established. It is the establishment of firmness and resilience with laid down rules, regulations, and constitution. <laughs> it is the prosecution of officers, of, of the offenders of the law, prosecution of the offenders of the law, and commitment to its execution. These are key issues in enforcement. So, in, in general, it's strict adherence or conformity to rule of law, to due process, to constitution, or constituted authority, principles, regulations, and standards. These are what we talk about enforcement. So we need this so that structure and system can function. This is the only way. And these are the major four key components of structure. Infrastructure, management, functionality, and enforcement. We have extensively dealt with structure and its components. Then we now we are not going to talk about expertise. So we can then compare the two and know what the difference is. What then is expertise when we are talking of expertise? Expertise is the skill, the, the skill or the knowledge in a particular area, that's expertise. It is the acquisition of advanced knowledge. Acquisition of advanced knowledge it is a great skill, a talent. <laughs> it, in a particular field, once, once you have an advanced knowledge in a particular area or field, it means you are skillful in that area. So, expertise talks about the technical know-how, the intellectual capacity. It, is, it talks about you being a genius in an area because of your potential, because of your ability, because of your capacity. So, it involves high level of intellectual capacity. That's what we're talking about when we talk about expertise. The synonyms about expertise means if you are if you are an expert or you are skillful in a place it means you have high mental prowess you are proficient in that area you you have ableness it's equivalent to being clever cleverness ableness ma mastery you are, you are you are a master in that area you 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 have technical know-how you have ability you have capacity you have skill you have knowledge you have talent you have competence all these, you have finesse. All these are embedded in an expertise. So if, if they say a person is skillful, is, is an expert, means he's skillful. He has all these qualities and abilities. These are the things. How then is structure different from expertise? In the beginning, I asked you a question. If they say structure and expertise, which one will you choose? This is where the decision will be now. Nigeria is loaded with a lot of experts, a lot of skillful people, knowledgeable people, technical know-how, competence are plenty, intellectual high capacities. In fact, Nigeria is one of the countries that have been loaded with so much of potential. I don't know of any country like that in the whole world. A lot of things, a lot of, a lot of skill and talents. But yet, the country is not moving forward. On, yet, we, we, we are in a stagnant position. Why? Because of lack of structure or because of enforcement of structure. 
So there are many issues. So without structure, expertise will be useless. That's what we're talking about. Without structure, skillfulness, competence, and expertise is useless. Why are we talking about sectionalism? Why are we talking about the North dividing in Nigeria? So today, it's because of lack of structure. Let me tell you, it, it, it structure is what differentiates one, one, one country from being a developed country or underdeveloped. In America, if you put a goat in America to be a president, the structures will still be running because there is an enforcement. There is functionality. There is management. There is infrastructure, maintenance of infrastructure. But in Nigeria, that cannot happen. If you put any president... Everybody will follow the, the president to take the order of the day. Why? Because of lack of system. And we need to deal with this thing. If not, we are not moving anywhere. So what are we talking about? What then are the consequences of lack of structure? We have talked extensively on structure and expertise. And we have seen that structure is more important than expertise. What then are the consequences of lack of structure? If you take Nigeria, for example, where structures are not in place, systems are not in place, the consequences of lack of structure cannot be emphasized. There are numerous multiplicity of problems. And that is why we are where we are in a stagnant position. The sufferings of so many today all are attributed to lack of structure. It's a structural issue, a systemic issue. A lot of mortality rate in the country, high mortality. In fact, the mortalities in Nigeria can cover so many countries together. Why? Because of lack of structure. Thank God that God has helped us that we don't have natural disasters in Nigeria. But what we are having as a result of lack of structure is worse than having natural disasters. Why? Lack of structure. Why are we having impunities? High impunity. Exception from punishment by some freedom from injurious consequences by some high people that are positioned. There are some people that are untouchable in this country. It's lack of structure. What of nepotism, favoritism, tribalism? Hmm. High maternal mortality rate. We, an education system is also falling. There are multiplicity of issues. Insecurities, killings here and there, banditry. Kidnapping, all can be traceable to lack of structure. Personal structure cannot even function. If you don't have a personal, if you don't have a personal structure, personal principles, nobody tells you when you wake up in the morning to brush your teeth. That is structure. That is how things are supposed to be done. So many lack of maintenance culture in Nigeria and in Africa. Programs without structure, parallel programs. Fragmentation of issues. Programs are fragmented. Eh? Organizations are fragmented. Leadership period, corruption, skilled web distribution. One single person will assume a throne, assume leadership position, and clear the whole treasury, only him. And forgetting that he will die one day. Not even knowing that the day he dies, the person that Though he does not even think of in the family, will be the one to clear the money because of lack of structure, not foreseen, not leaving a legacy. People cross the bridge and break the bridge so that others will not cross. That is what we are talking about. Forgetting that we will die one day. Let me tell us if, if God fails to, tarries to come, or the world fails to, 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 to finish, or Jesus fails to come. In the next 50 to 60 years, most of us that are 20 years and above, most of us will not be alive then. But Nigeria will still continue. The future will still continue. Let's think, think of the future. We make laws to favor one side. 
to favor one side of the country, favor our side. Why can we not have a perfect electoral law system, electoral system? When people are debating, they are, they are thinking of, of the next election, which is the next two, three years. Not thinking about 100, 200 days that will come. Our children that are going to live for 200 years, they forget that one. Just thinking just beyond their nose. Not thinking ahead. Lack of structure. I'm telling you, these are the things that are the consequences. And until we deal with them, we will remain in the same position. We need to deal with these issues because of structure. What then are the enemies of structure? Let's outline them one by one so that we can know our enemies and see how we can tackle them one by one. What are the enemies? Number one in Nigeria especially is lack of effective constitution. Constitution that is favorable to all is an issue. Once that constitution is deficient, and is not applicable to all and fair to all justice and equity, fairness and justice with our constitution. The whole structure, whole system cannot work. So it needs to be there. Secondly, greed. Only one person wants to take everything to himself. What is the another enemy? Selfishness. Only thinking of yourself and forgetting others. My God, nepotism, they are enemies of structure. Favoritism and tribalism, impunity, oh, religious bias, all these are enemies of structure, lack of purpose and vision. Many don't have purpose and vision for the future. So these are strong enemies. Lack of impactful existence, these are key issues. Poor leadership style is an enemy of structure. No consideration for legacy. Many are just existing for vacancy, forgetting that legacy is the most important. Lack of contentment. People are not contented with what you have. Life does not consist of what you have. Life consists of what you give. That is legacy. Poor character. People don't have character. People don't have moral values. Lack of management principles. All the management principles we talked about, many people do not have those functions. We have listed them and we need to go through them. These are things we are talking about. It is better for people to learn management structures. Even geos of organization, learn management structures. Lack of proactiveness, thinking ahead, being a visionary, thinking of 200 years to come. Generations is what we should be thinking about, not congregation. These are enemies we must deal with. Above all of this is the lack of the fear of God. Is the, in fact, is the end of all the enemies of structure. And so we need to do something about it. What am I saying? Nigeria, we are repeating, we are failing, but we are here rejoicing that things are happening. Meanwhile, we are in a stagnant position. We are repeating, but we are excited. If you look at the rank in all the world, world ranking, we are taking first position from the back. But high mortality rate, we are number, if the world is what, we are number 150 something. Even football, we cannot come near. And we say we are the giant of Africa. We are repeating, but yet we are laughing. This is the condition we are in Nigeria, and something needs to be done about it. After talking about all this, the last thing we need to talk about is the way forward. How are we going to move ourselves from this way forward? How can we rescue ourselves from this wicked situation of lack of structure, bondage situation? If only we can do the following. Number one of the things we need to do is for us to deal with all the enemies of structure, which we have enumerated about. If we can begin to deal with them one after the other, we will make headway. When we begin to take responsibility, when we begin to deal with these issues one by one, we will make a possible headway. What again do we need to do? Especially in Nigeria, there is a time we need to review our constitution, review our, our electoral system, review and sit down with no, no bias, with no prejudice. When, when we are thinking of legacy, 
By the time we do that, we'll have a fair and equitable justice situation that is fair to all. This is what we need to, to do. We need to abolish all the blame game, blaming each other. We need to stop that so that we can move forward. We need to build legacy and not vacancy. When you die from this world, you are only a vacancy. You have left position. You are a matter occupying space. We need to focus on impact and not on personal income and self-gain. This remember the future, our unborn generation, ages to come. <laughs> These are the things that will make us to move forward. And the platform for what, what all this will survive is actually the fear of God, which needs to be in our system. This is very, very, very key. The fear of God surpasses everything. So we need to think of legacy. We are created to love each other. Remember the words of Pope Francis. Pope Francis said, and I quote, he said, rivers do not, does not drink its water. He said, the sun does not shine upon itself. He said the trees does not eat its own fruit and the flowers does not spread its fragrance on itself. <laughs> he said we are born to love each other. We are born to help each other. That is the golden rule. Look, living for, your, for, for, for others, living for others is impact. Look, the summary of every existence of us making impact and legacy is summarized into three words. J-O-Y or G-O-Y. That is Jesus, others, and you. Or God, others, and you. You need to be connected to God first. The fear of God is number one. Then consider others before you. You are the last person. So, First person to consider is God. Second person is others. And the next is you. Joy. That is the summary of impactful existence. So living for God and others is impact. Living for yourself is income and greed. Mm -hmm. Living for God and others is legacy. Living for yourself is vacancy and i can tell you legacy is stronger and more important than vacancy impact is stronger and more important than income what are we trying to do we must leave legacy if those that went before us met the world and left the world as they met it things would have been be different and will be bad for us today. They were thinking of innovation, thinking of others and generations ahead. Think of people that created them, the, the Wright brothers that made the, the plane, Michael Faraday, Thomas Edison, some of them that developed the, the, the bulb and electricity. They added something to their world. We should be thinking of legacy and trying to make a mark and something that will leave behind for generations unborn to celebrate. What are you going to leave as legacy? That is what a structure is. And as I leave you in this episode, let me tell you, no matter how difficult life is, the things are, life is good when you are happy. But let me tell you, life is better. In fact, life is best when others are happy because of you. And I'd like us to go home with this in this episode that we must need to leave a legacy. You must be a producer and not a consumer. Let's think of the generations to come. Let's leave structure behind. That is the only way we can leave a legacy. And when we have structure, it will help us to increase in our expertise. Structure is better than expertise. Thank you as you follow me on this episode. I'd like you to stay tuned for the next edition. I see a new Nigeria. I see a new constitutional system. I see a new electoral system. I see individuals moving from this level to another level. I see individuals developing 
personal structure, principles and standards and moral values. I see families developing a culture, family names and norms that will spring us into our next level and taking us to a higher realm. These are the, my expectations. And I know as you do this, the Lord God will bless you and see you on top. Follow me gently. I'd like you to share this special edition of this video. Let it go viral because this is key to making our system, Africa, the world, a better place, especially Nigeria. Please follow me gently. Stay tuned for the next edition. I'd like to have your comments. Tell others and, and share this to others and your contacts. And the Lord God will bless you.